Today I'm going to answer a question that I get asked a lot and it's how do I create a great looking website if I'm a photographer, makeup artist, model, hairstylist, videographer. So here is my website and what I'm going to do is walk you guys step by step on how I created this website and what you can do to get started today. It's very, very simple. Now let's go ahead and get started. So. I'm a big fan of using WordPress. Now I know there's a lot of options. There's, if you're a photographer, you got things like SmugMug, Zenfolio, um, and if you're just a regular business owner, a model makeup artist, things like that, you may have heard of something called Squarespace. Well, I love using WordPress because it's so customizable and it also helps you out with your SEO, in my opinion. I mean, there's some really cool, powerful things you can do as far as SEO and getting yourself recognized and getting really good organic traffic that you can do in WordPress. Now, I'm not saying you can't do it in the other websites. I just don't know how it's done because this is the format that I work in. So that's what I'm gonna share with you guys today. So if you've been interested in using a WordPress website and you're curious about how to actually get started with it, this video is gonna answer those questions for you. So one of the things we're gonna start off first with is domain name. I'm a big fan of making sure that you don't use a free Wix site or anything like that. Here's the reason why. There's no way that you would ever go to a doctor that had a free Wix site. It just wouldn't happen. So if you're a model, a makeup artist, a hairstylist, designer, a videographer, and you wanna get taken seriously, and you want people to invest in you and your services, then you need to invest in yourself. And the first step to that is making sure that you've got a proper domain name. So I use GoDaddy, I'm a big fan of them. And you can come here to GoDaddy and get a domain name for as inexpensive as 99 cents. And you simply type in what it is that you want the name of your company to be. And if you're an artist, most likely you may be using your own name. And you can play with some variations if your name is not available. Or you can go ahead and bid. If somebody already has that name, you can make an offer to them to purchase that name from them. So first step get yourself a proper domain name. Now the next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to have a, uh, a WordPress theme. So what my recommendation is, go to themeforest.net and you've got this really cool website that has tons of templates for nearly any type of business that you can imagine. Now what you wanna do here is here in the search bar, you're gonna type in, uh, let's go with photography. These are portfolio-based websites, and it provides you a list. Look at the results, 4,260 results of WordPress themes. Now, what is a theme? What am I talking about? So let's take a look at one. We're just gonna grab one here that kind of sticks out to me. Let's do scene one, cool. So you click on it, and click on this live preview button, and what you're gonna do is you're gonna get a live preview of what this website looks like. These are websites that other people have coded, built, put together, and when you purchase them, you get all the features that you see here, plus you get all the stock images that are included with it, and the idea is that you replace all the stock images and the stock content with your own personal stuff for your website. So as we go through here, uh, let's check out, you can hover over home pages. There's all these variations of home pages. So you would say, okay, I like the basic idea of the website. Now let me further customize it and take a look and see what this homepage will look like. Pretty cool. Okay, it doesn't scroll up and down. It's got a little menu here. All right. Um, let's say you need a portfolio, right? So you have a couple options here. You've got Portfolio Modern. Let's take a look at that and see what that looks like. Okay, now what does that look like compared to, for example, a masonry portfolio? Okay, there you go. So you can see that there's a lot of customization built into these themes. Now, all you gotta do is go here and pick the one that fits you best. Now, I've used a couple of them that I really, really love. Uh, X-Theme, huge fan of X-Theme. Show you guys this. There's just so many cool features to it. Um, it's got a lot of really great coding built into it and uh, customization is just awesome. So you click here on the demo side and uh, we'll go to Integrity One, one of their demos here. And I mean, these are just really, really cool, simple, clean sites. Uh, another one that I'm a huge fan of, let's see here, is the O-Shine. 
love this. Now this is what my current website is built on. It's on this particular theme. So let's click here on the demos and you just got some really, really cool stuff. Now let's say that you're a model, right? This might be a perfect website for you. You got a great headshot of you and then you can jump right into your portfolio. Now here's what I'm gonna recommend. If you're a makeup artist or a hairstylist or a videographer, anything like that, you may be tempted to come in here and type in like makeup artist, right? Well, let's go ahead and do it. You're gonna find that, okay, there's 21 makeup artist related website templates. There's not a lot of results. And the reality is, if you're a makeup artist, hairstylist, designer, anything like that, that needs a portfolio, you're probably still gonna follow the same format as what you would consider a traditional photography website to follow. So my recommendation is, even though you're not a photographer, type that in anyways, get all these results here and find something that fits that you can customize and make perfect for you. This would be great whether you're a makeup artist or a model or a hairstylist or a videographer. I mean, this it's cool, right? All right, so here's what you're gonna do. You're gonna come here, you're gonna buy your theme, you own this theme. Now, Squarespace and a few of the other places, um, you, you pay monthly hosting. And it's a monthly fee for your website. You know, I don't know how much it costs, but Squarespace is a monthly fee. So every month for the life of that um, website, you're gonna pay a monthly fee to Squarespace. Now, here's the cool thing about WordPress. Yes, I'm gonna pay for hosting, that's yearly, okay? I'm gonna pay for my domain name, very inexpensive on both of those things. I think I pay like 14 bucks through GoDaddy. Now, when you buy this thing, you own it. You own the rights to it to install it one time for the life of the website that you have. So if you have this website for the next 40 years, I don't imagine you would, but if you had it for the next 40 years, you could never pay another fee because you've already bought it once. So in the long run, definitely a cost saver. And the prices range. I mean, anything from 19, 49, 69, 79 bucks, I think, 75, okay? Very inexpensive. Okay, now the next step after downloading your theme is to get it installed. So if you did what I did and you use GoDaddy, there are some very basic instructions on how to install WordPress and connect it with your GoDaddy domain name. So for example, here you log into your WordPress, um, click on web hosting, click manage. There's a section there that has WordPress. You're gonna click install now from within inside of GoDaddy. And then once you're there, you're just gonna complete the, the information that's on there. Select the domain, which is the name that you just purchased, right? So for example, in my case, it's shanebakerstudios.com. Um, and then tell it where I want it to install, right? And then I'm gonna create a username and a password, and that's it. Pretty simple. Now, if you have any questions, I'm not gonna go through because many of you might have different hosting companies. Simply call your hosting company, say, look, I purchased a WordPress um, theme, premium theme, and I want to get it installed and I want to use my, my domain name that I purchased with you, they will walk you through the process. You won't have any issues. So once you've done that, this is what it looks like on the back end. So here's how you're going to log in. You're going to create, uh, you're going to type in your name of your domain, shanebakerstudios.com forward slash WP dash admin. Hit enter. This is what you're going to find. Uh, you put in your username or your email address and then the password that you created. And then when you log in, you now have access to the back end of your, web, of your uh, website. Now, on first glance, it looks really complicated, but there's just a few things that you really need to know about WordPress. And once you understand those, it'll make it very simple to make changes to your theme and keep your website up to date. Now, we're not gonna make any changes currently to my website, but what I've done is I've installed uh, kind of a mock WordPress on my on my computer and I'm going to show you step by step how to install the theme that you guys just purchased and download. So I'm going to go ahead and close this out. We're not making any changes to my actual live website. This is just um, a, a, basically it's a, it's a testing site. So the back end of your WordPress may look very similar to mine when you first log in and one of the first things you want to do is make sure that the theme is up to date and all the plugins are up to date. So right here we're on a plugins uh, menu and you'll notice that these little arrows here says there's a new version of them, right? So all I want to do is simply click on this box, go to bulk actions, hit update, hit apply, and it'll just go through and update all those plugins for me automatically. See, so it's done that, great. And up here it says it 
WordPress 4.7.4 is available. Please update now. Now, here's the thing. When you're making changes and you're putting your website together, if your themes and your plugins aren't up to date, there are chances that you'll run into issues. So you want to make sure that that's taken care of. So we'll go ahead and hit update now. Oh, great. So the next step is actually uploading that theme that you just purchased. You're going to come over here to appearance. You're going to go over to themes. Click on add new. Click on upload theme. And here it's going to tell you to find the zip folder that you downloaded. Now it gets a little confusing here. You're not going to actually upload that folder that you downloaded. You're going to go inside of it like this. You're going to click inside of here and find another zip folder that has the name of your theme on it. That is the folder that you're going to upload. And to make it simple for myself, I simply dragged and dropped it to my desktop. I copied it there. So it's really simple for me to find. So when I come here and I select and choose a file, you're not uploading that folder that you originally downloaded. You're uploading the other zip file that's inside of it. That's the one that you're going to upload. And you're going to click on Appearance, Themes, and you're going to find the theme that you just downloaded here. Now this is where you get to customize it, add tons of widgets. Now you may think, this doesn't look anything like what I just bought. Well, here's why. You have to come over here to Import Demo Data. Now yours might be in a different location, but if you click on and Import Demo Data, it's going to bring in all those portfolio pages, those variations of home pages, um, all the blogging pages that you loved and saw. It'll import all that data. And all you have to do from that point is say, okay, which one of those do I want to choose to use? Uh, and then make any changes that you want. Add your own logo, add your own images, add your own content, et cetera, et cetera. So that is the basics. Guys, I hope that helps. Follow me on Instagram at Shane Baker Studios. And if you guys have any questions, definitely leave a comment. You can also follow me for more upcoming tutorials. We're going to be talking about a lot more cool things like how to get increased SEO out of your WordPress website once you've got it up and running. So you don't want to miss that. Have a good one, guys. Take care.